Jesus and the twelve had finished their Passover meal, sang a hymn, and gone out. Where did they go? John 18, 1 says, When Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples over the brook Kidron, where there was a garden which he and his disciples entered. The Kidron Valley is a significant place. The word Kidron means the gloom of the valley, suggesting a peculiar nature of impurity connected with it. The valley had become a graveyard, lined with the carved stone tombs of the wealthy. The stream often ran red during the Passover, with the blood drained into it from the lambs sacrificed in the temple. So Jesus, the Lamb of God, crossed the blood-stained stream flowing through a cemetery to pray about his coming crucifixion. The symbolism was everywhere. Jesus literally had to walk through the valley of the shadow of death, placing death and the grave beneath his feet before he came to the garden. We know that the garden was called Gethsemane, which means the olive press. Can you imagine being pressed out any more than Jesus was that night? Luke 22, 39, 46 tells that Jesus had to go alone to have a private moment to share his burdens with his Father. More than any other place in Scripture, we see Christ at the full crisis of his dual role as God-man. Luke 22:44 says, And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. His sweat fell like great drops of blood falling to the ground. The original Greek word for anguish is angonia, meaning combat. It is this word from which we derive the English word agony. In the New Testament, it is used for denoting not the fear that draws back and flees, but the fear that trembles in the face of the issue, yet continues on to the end. Just think, if Jesus had not followed through, we would not be saved. Luke 22, 42 says, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Have you ever wondered about the cup? Did he mean the plight or problem? We learn from Beth Moore that the third cup of the Passover is the cup of redemption. It stands for the I will statement, I will redeem you with an outstretched arm. This is the cup to which Christ referred to when he asked God to take this cup from him. This was a cup he could partake of only with outstretched arms upon the cross. We know Christ did not literally drink this third cup at the Passover meal because he stated in Luke 22, 18 that he would not drink of another cup until the coming of the kingdom of God. Instead of drinking the cup, he would do something of sin-shattering significance. He would, in essence, become the cup and pour out his life for the redemption of man. Christ knew what he would endure. As he prayed to his Father, we do not want to miss the fact that Christ Jesus the King, who created all things, knelt in submission. Philippians 2, 5-8 through 8 says, Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who, being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. The disciples learned from watching Jesus how to get through the hardest times they would ever face. They would face their own Gethsemanes. Gethsemane is the place where we have to decide to lay down our own will and submit to his authority. Jesus was then found by Judas and turned over to trials and mobs to finally be crucified. But three days later, he arose. He then stayed on the earth 40 days until he ascended into heaven. He had fulfilled his work on earth. 1 Corinthians 1.20 says, For all of the promises of God in him, Jesus, are yes. Jesus said yes to the anguish and death on the cross, knowing that he would fulfill all of God's Old and New Testament promises of peace, joy, love, goodness, forgiveness, salvation, sanctification, fellowship, hope, glorification, and heaven.